Hello everybody, so in this video we're going to talk about a single linear inequality. Okay, for right now the first thing we want to do is check if a candidate solution is the solution to that inequality. So in this first example we have the candidate solution 1, negative 2, and we want to check if that is a solution to 2x minus 7y is less than 25. Okay, so what we're going to do is just go ahead and plug in 1, negative 2 to my solution. So I'm plugging in 1 for x. So 2x minus 7y, and I'm plugging in negative 2 for y, is less than 25. Okay, so I have 2 plus 14 less than 25 or 16 is less than 25, okay? So this is a true statement, 16 is less than 25, and what that tells us is that this is a solution. So our answer would be yes, 1, negative 2 is a solution. Then let's go ahead and look at our second example. So our candidate solution is still 1, negative 2, okay? But now our inequality is 2x minus 7y is less than or equal to 16, okay? So again, we're going to be plugging in 1, negative 2. So I plug in 1 for x and negative 2 for y. So I have 2 plus 14 is less than or equal to 16, okay? Now, this is a little bit less obvious than the previous one if this is a true statement or not, right? So I want to point out to you that really the most important part of this is this or equal to part. Okay, that's what's making this a true statement. So 16 is not less than 16, but because we have or equal to, right, this is still true. Okay, so we would say, yes, 1, negative 2 is a solution. Okay, so let's look at our last example of testing a solution. So we have the same candidate solution, 1, negative 2, and we're going to test it in this really similar looking inequality, 2x minus 7y is less than 16. So I have uh, 2x minus 7y is less than 16, okay? So again, I have 2 plus 14 Okay, or 16 is less than 16. Okay, now in the previous example we had less than or equal to, right? So when the numbers were the same, it was a true statement because we were looking at or equal to. In this example, we can see that we have just less than, we don't have or equal to. So this is a false statement, 16 is not less than 16, okay? So our answer would be no, that this is not a solution. Okay. All right. So now that we've talked about um, how to check if something is a solution, I want to talk about how we are going to visualize all of the solutions to a linear inequality, okay? It's not like a linear equation where we can visualize them by looking at a line, um, but an inequality 
we are also going to visualize all of the solutions by looking at a graph, okay? So the first thing I want to do is uh, define a word that we use to describe the solutions, okay? Okay, so we say that the solution region is the part of the xy plane where all of the solutions are located, okay? So this is really how we're going to show our solutions is by graphing this region, okay? And I want to say that in particular, we show this region by shading it in. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the plan for graphing solution regions. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is graph the line that shows the border for the solution region. Okay, so we are going to graph the line. Okay, so the line is going to come from the exact same numbers and everything from the inequality, but instead of the inequality symbol, you're going to put an equal sign, and that will allow you to graph the line or the border of the inequality. Okay, then the second thing we're going to do is determine if the line is uh, solid or dotted. So the way that we determine this is if the line has solutions on it, right? So if the points on that line are solutions, then it's solid, okay? And if the points are not solutions, okay, then it's dotted. And then the last thing we're going to do is test a point not on the line. Okay. 
and then that will allow us to shade the solution region. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how to do this, okay? So the first thing we're going to do again is look at the border of the solution region by looking at the equality part of the inequality, okay? That's what we call the associated equation. Let's get a graph in here. Okay, so our example Okay, so we're going to graph the solution region for 2x minus 3y is greater than 6. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, again, is look at the associated equation, which is 2x minus 3y equals 6, and we are going to graph this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph using the intercepts. So I'm going to look for the y-intercept by letting x equal 0, okay? So I get y equals negative 2, so my y-intercept is the point 0, negative 2, okay? Then I'm going to look for the x-intercept by setting y equal to 0. Okay, so my x-intercept is 3 comma 0. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark these two points. Okay. All right, and then our solution region is going to come from uh, connecting these two points with a line. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these with a line like that, okay? Make that a little bit thinner so we can see it. There we go. Okay. So now we want to decide if the line is solid or dotted, okay? So we're going to look at the inequality part of this, right? So if we're asking ourselves this question, we're going to look at the inequality symbol, okay? Now we saw in our first two examples that if you're getting the same number like you would on the line, then greater than is going to not include those numbers, okay? So if we're looking for numbers that are not, numbers that are solutions, okay, which implies that we're looking at a solid line, 
we want our inequality symbols to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, okay? If we are looking for the line to not have solutions, which means that we would be using a dotted line, okay, then we are looking for our inequality symbols to be greater than or less than with no or equal to part. Okay, and this is what we have in the situation that we're looking at right now, right? We have that we're looking at just greater than with no or equal to, and what that means for us is that our line should be dotted to show that those numbers on that line are not solutions, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and turn this into a dotted line Okay, I know that this is not as easy to do if you are drawing. Okay, there we go. So now we have a dotted line. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is test a point. Okay. So let's make some room over here. Now that we have the line, I don't really need this. So let's go ahead and test a point. Okay, now the important thing about the point that you test for whether or not it's a solution is it should not be on this line, okay? Most often you will test the point zero, zero because it's so easy to plug in, okay? but the only important thing is that you are testing a point that is not on the existing line, okay? So I have two times zero minus three times zero, right? We're testing it just like we did in the first three examples, okay? And I have zero is greater than six, which is false, okay? So that means that zero, zero is not a solution. So because this line cuts the plane in half, right, we have just this upper left part or this lower right part. If zero, zero is not a solution, what that means is that all of our solutions have to be on the lower right part, okay? So all of our solutions are going to be down there. So let's go ahead and shade in our solution region down here, okay? So because zero, zero is not a solution, it means that all of our solutions are falling below or to the right of this line, okay? All right, in the next video, we'll do another example of this, so I will see you guys there.